Hello, this is Christine with Coco Daisy, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about um, a new product that we've had out for a few months. It's our Simple Dory, and it's a way of memory keeping on kind of a smaller scale in a traveler's notebook format. And I also wanted to talk a little bit then about how I uh, used the product in mine and how I set up mine. And then also um, kind of how I've streamlined the system so that I can, I can kind of do this almost anywhere, which is a wonderful advantage to having a smaller setup like this. And then I'll also talk a little bit about the new subscription we have um, coming up that is a Traveler's Notebook memory keeping kit. So we'll talk about kind of all of those things, but what I, if you're not familiar with what we call our Simple Dory, it is basically a traveler's notebook that you can use for uh, memory keeping. So a lot of the traveler's notebooks that are out there are basically just, they're like this. This is a Webster's Pages, I believe. And it's, it's just plain. So you can really kind of do whatever you want in here, which is lovely because you can tailor it to however you want. The only problem that I have with this is that if you're not a real creative person or if you're trying to do something in a faster, more simplified manner, if you don't really want to have to stare at that blank page and try to figure out how you're going to do a layout on there, um, then, then you want something a little different. At least that's why I created this product. I wanted something a little different. The other thing is too, is that when you have this and let's say you wanted to add some uh, piece of patterned paper on this side because you wanted to add pattern in here for your layout, you're then adding even more bulk, which when you have a notebook like this, you kind of want to keep the bulk down a little bit so that the pages aren't too, um, too bulgy. So this is just a, a normal traveler's notebook that you can kind of get anywhere. And it, a lot of people use it for journaling, for art journals, that kind of thing. But what we did is we took it just a little step farther. We took our standard size traveler's notebook and then we added the artwork that is found in the collection for that month. So this one is from October and you can see as I flip through that we have the some of the paper designs, some of the the artwork from the planner kits all put together on here. But it's already printed on the pages. And the way that I tried to set this up is that it would be a simplified way of creating your layouts on each page. And I'll go over, there's basically two formulas. I'll go over those in just a second. But basically you've got um, some patterns, some grid lines, which is helpful for those of us that don't have the neatest handwriting. There are a few more blank pages in here as well that um, if you are feeling really creative or you just wanna put a lot of photos on, there's a few pages like that in there as well. So it's a wonderful mix. But on the first page, it kind of has this little book plate area or label area, which I like to use just to kind of label what this booklet is about. Now, it doesn't have to be just for a whole month. You could set up this booklet, think of it kind of like a mini album, almost, when you do your memory keeping. So I put October moments, but this could easy be if you had a special um, Halloween party, if you had um, a bunch of field trips with your kids to pumpkin patches or you wanted to just document a particular vacation or day's events or family events, this whole booklet could be just that. It doesn't have to be for the whole month. So remember, there's a lot of different options in using it. So I mentioned that there's basically two formulas when you're doing the layout. And most of it is there's a sheet of pattern paper on one side and then there's a blank page. Well, the reason I do that is because when you're working with these, 
to keep it, like I said, to keep it simplified, there's a couple different things you can do. You can do um, one side that has a couple of small photos and then the other side have journaling or you can do a full page of a picture and then just some journaling on the pattern paper. paper sorry. So it keeps it really simple. That's why we have the name and you're not having to add a bunch of bulk by having to add in all those sheets of pattern paper in here. So this is, uh, like I said, this is kind of before I got to work in mine. And then I'm gonna page through and I'm gonna show you kind of what I did. And, uh, and I'm gonna talk about a few of the things, a few of the techniques that I used in my booklet. So on the front, I, as I said, I just kind of labeled mine October moments. And the one thing that I wanna point out as I go through this, some of these you'll see dates on them. And they're, but they're not in order. So I didn't try to say, okay, this had to be October 1st and then this had to be October 5th. They're all random. I just picked whichever patterns or pages worked with the story that I was trying to tell. So on this layout, um, I, love the, I love the idea of using this, leaving most of this pretty pattern just kind of open like that. Again, it keeps it simple. You don't feel like you have to fill up that whole space, which I think is one of the things that kind of can become a little bit time consuming when you're working on like a 12 by 12 uh, traditional scrapbook page you look at that blank page and you feel like you have to fill it up you feel like you have to spend a lot of time on it these are so nice and simple and so easy to do that you could literally do four or five pages in a sitting or even just one or two pages a night so what I did here is I added uh, some stamping so I did a little alpha stamping there just a simple die cut chipboard die cut and then I cut, I had some scraps of paper left from, um, from other of the various kits. There was the 12 by 12 memory keeping kit and then there was some paper from the planner kit. And I just cut those up into smaller little uh, squares and lined them up with my picture. I added a little sticker and I cut out a little leaf from one of the other paper scraps I had. And this is done. I mean, you can see really how simple that is. I need to add a little journaling on here yet, so I haven't done that yet, but it's that. I'm gonna, you're gonna hear me say the word simple a lot, but that's the whole idea behind this. It gives you that, that creativity, it gives you that option to, to do memory keeping, but in a super easy way. So, and I have a couple pages left that I've not done yet. And then on this page here, I filled up the whole page with, um, with a photograph. And I want, oh, I wanted to mention, so you'll see these smaller pictures, which I print using um, my little Instax printer, which I can print right from my phone. And they're these cute little, almost like a little Polaroid. And actually that's, that is how they print out. You have to wait for them to develop just like the old Polaroids did. The picture quality is not gonna be the same as one that you print from, from your printer. But I love it. I love the size. I, I love the kind of the vintage feel. And they're just so easy to do. They're so easy to just kind of print out real quick and, and they're ready for you. This is a larger picture that I printed just from my computer on my Epson printer. And then again, I left most of this beautiful pattern here and I just added a tag with some um, journaling. A, a little die cut, and then a little label that I stamped the, the date on. And then here's a page, and if you look, you'll notice, so this one we had set up with this type of a setup as far as the patterns. The pattern's all along the top on this one, and then there's, a, there's a, a soft grid on the bottom. So what it does is you don't want all of your pages to look the same, but again, you don't wanna just be staring at that blank spread trying to figure out what to do. And once you've used these, you kind of figure out a formula for each type of layout and it makes it go so fast. So I left that pattern along the top. I cut out this little triangle pattern from one of our free printables. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, here it is. So this had, had another one on the other side that I cut out. So I cut around that free printable and I just created a little border 
added one of my photos, um, just some uh, chipboard alpha stickers, a little journaling, and then a die cut, and that's it. And I love the, the fact that on these, there's a lot of open space. That's okay, don't feel like you have to fill it up. The design work has kind of been done for you, so it's okay to have that open space and create that layout like that. And then again, here is the next page. And this one just kind of has this rectangle kind of in the middle. And there's a, and as I, and I'm gonna continue to show you um, how, how to, to use your simple dories every month. So I'll show you different ways to use this. But the, one of the things I love to do with the rectangle layout is create layers. And so I simply layered, and you'll see tons of tags in mine because I love tags. I think they're so versatile. I used a tag, a little, little scrap of patterned paper, a few die cuts, a little chipboard. I, I stamped the, the date on a little tab die cut. And then I added a few of the, the little enamel dots. And these are nice to use because they add a little bit of embellishment, but they're not that thick. So they work well in here. And if you're not a big fan of your handwriting, you can totally print out and just cut out and stick on some journaling if you prefer that too. So don't ever feel like you have to handwrite in them. I kind of do a mix of both. And then on this page, I had a couple of pictures that I wanted to include. So I just kind of created a collage. I printed these out on my printer. I added the tag again uh, with a couple of the little gold vellum leaves. I stamped a little on there and then just a chipboard um, die cut. And then this page was that completely open page. So I thought that would be a good page um, to do kind of a couple pictures. But what I did is instead of using a traditional uh, piece of patterned paper, I had some leftover pieces from my planner inserts. So this is part of an A5 um, planner insert and it's the weekly stripe page. So this is also a great way to recycle some of that art on some of those insert pages that you're not using in your planner. So if you have them left over, you can totally use them. I thought this went so well with the fact that I'm talking about a busy week. So I just cut it and laid it, um, laid it sideways like that and then added my two photos, a little strip of pattern paper, a few die cuts, some alphas, and again here I printed out my journaling and put it on there and that turned out really cute. And then another example of a full of a full page photograph page, a full <laughs> photograph page. Sorry, uh, just another. In it, if you look, so you'll see the same formula. So when I talked about formulas, it's a great way to get a lot of pages done quickly. Don't feel like every single one has to be different. If you do something that you like and it looks good to you, do it again. I mean, this is totally allowed because you're creating a project that that you're enjoying but that you also want to get done and not have to worry about and feel like oh I have to get that done this is just makes it so nice and yes simple so this one I didn't really add any journaling to I thought it was kind of self-explanatory so I just added a little bit of um, some alpha stickers and, and a, just a little uh, label sticker with the date this page I have not done yet. Um, Halloween was last night, so I have to work on that page yet. But I loved this. I thought this orange pattern in this spread would be great to, to work with for Halloween pictures. So that's what that's gonna be. And I wanted to mention the little string here. So when I can, I tend to get a little rough when I work on my booklets. And I, even though I try not to, I may get just a little bit of bulk in them. And then invariably what happens is that this, it starts to work out from the staples. So what I do is I just throw a piece of string on and it holds it all together. So easy peasy. You could do ribbon. I'm sure you could restaple them. I'm just kind of too lazy to do that. So then here's a page that if you look at the original, it had the the pumpkin and then the blank page well what i wanted um was actually because it was about jeffrey's birthday and i loved this heart paper that had been in the um in the 12 by 12 planner 
or a 12 by 12 memory keeping kit. So I covered this up with a piece of pattern paper and then just added a couple pictures. I punched a few hearts from some uh, pattern scraps that I had, some uh, alpha, alpha stickers, and then I printed my journaling out on a piece of vellum, which if you do that, just let it kind of sit and dry before you handle it because it can smear a little. So if you want to just, you know, go ahead and print that out and then just kind of set it aside. And then I added just a couple of those uh, little enamel dots to that. And then this page, again, uh, the full photo. And then on this side, just a nice, um, a nice little title. These were from the printable that I kind of fussy cut out. This is some stamping. So a good alpha stamp is great to have when you're working in your uh, simple dory because you just use it over and over. And then on this one, I just... I did add some journaling. I just printed it out and cut it into strips and put it on there and I really liked how that turned out. And I wanted to mention too, like go ahead and alter the die cuts. If they, like this die cut, I don't remember what it says, but it says something on that die cut, but I liked the little banner. So what I did is I just cut a piece of white paper to cover up the wording so that I could use it more just kind of plain to layer. So remember you can alter your die cuts as well. And then this page was, this was another that was uh, fully blank. And then this one I went in and I chose this wood grain paper. This was from the month before, but we recently purchased an RV and there's, it's an older RV, so it has a ton of uh, wood grain in it. So I thought it was, it was kind of fun to use um, the wood grain pattern paper to go with it. So real simple, it's a, a full page of pattern paper, the photograph, a, a die cut, and then a couple of punched, I used a punch for those, a couple of punched arrows. And then the let's go on an adventure, I cut out using my, my silhouette, and I kind of ran that up the side. I have to put the journaling on this one yet too, but I think that turned out really cute. And then this page, uh, so another, another idea with the small photo just kind of layering this time, and I put it on the pattern paper, layered it with um, the uh, small piece behind that I had kind of inked, and then I stamped a bunch of, so using the stamp set. So I used the little leaves on this stamp set in a bunch of kind of the, the autumn colors and I kind of had the leaves kind of trailing down. And then I cut a couple of them out and put them over on this side. And again, printed my, my journaling on the vellum. And what I like about that too is that then you can kind of see the leaves um, through the vellum. And then I just added a strip of washi tape along the bottom. And washi tape is another great thing to use because there's not a lot of bulk when you use that. Another full photo, same idea with the, the printed strips for the journaling. And this one, uh, because this page, this page, that one was super easy to do because kind of your title and the artwork is all done on the one side. So basically it was a large photo and a couple strips of journaling, super fast. And then I have another blank page that I haven't filled in yet. And then this one, uh, there was a, a cute tag die cut from the 12 by 12 memory keeping kit that I added here with a photograph and then a couple of die cuts and a chipboard die cut. And this one I need to add the journaling to as well. Another blank one that I haven't filled in yet. And then this is the actual back page and I wanted to show you that you can use, you can use that page as well. So even though it has our logo in that on the bottom, you can cover that up if you want to and use it. So I just, I put my photograph on this side of blue with um, just a chipboard and then another one of my tags. I stamped uh, just the word currently from, oh, I don't have that stamp set here, but I have a stamp set that that's from. I just stamped that on there and then added my journaling. And that's it. I mean, it's really, it's really that simple. I may decorate the front yet. I'm not sure. I have a cute, a note card that I might um, I might put on the front there. I haven't decided yet, or I may cut I may 
uh, fussy cut out, like um, something from the printables would be cute to put on there as well. So that is a simple, that's how easy it is. I mean, honestly, you can create one of these so quickly. And if you follow a system also where in your planner, what I like to do is I will, if I have a picture that I know I'm gonna put in here, I will take it and um, I will print it out and I will stick it on that date in my planner and then jot a couple notes. And then that way when, when I'm ready to sit down in here, I can go back to my planner. I, can, I know what date it was taken. The picture is right there. The journaling is right there. And then I can put it in. The other thing I've started doing ahead of time is a little bit is if I think of some ideas as far as design wise, in my planner I have a section called sketches that I will then kind of sketch things out. So before I even get to the point of, of using any glue or cutting anything out, I already have my picture done, my journaling done, and a sketch. So when I do have the time to work on this, it goes really fast. So as I mentioned, I was gonna show you kind of my setup of how to make this so easy to do just about anywhere. So what I've, originally what I had is I had a, I had an old Webster's Pages uh, box that one of the, my planners came in. And then I had a couple of um, just these plastic containers that I had found at Michael's. And what I was doing is I was putting just kind of all my necessary supplies to work on the simple dory. And that's the beauty of it. It doesn't take much to, to, to work on that, to add to it. You've got some photos, die cuts, a few pattern paper scraps, and a few stamps. There's not much you need to work on that. So when you need, when you want to work on that, you can work on a kitchen table. You can, I sit in bed sometimes and work on that. You can sit in the family room with the family. And the other thing that I'm excited about, because we did purchase the RV, I can literally work on it in the RV. So this was kind of all I, what I would use is I just would carry my supplies in here from wherever I needed to go. And that was really all I needed. But what I wanted to do is, is kind of have it a little, a little bigger, maybe be able to contain it just a little bit. So I found from Poppin, P-O-P-P-I-N, um, is a neat company. And they had these desk caddies. Let me get that so you can see it a little better. So they had these desk caddies, and what I liked about them is they have these lids that fit in each other. So what I do is I have all of my die cuts spread out on here, so I can go through them without having to dump them all out like I was before. Previously I was keeping them in here, which was fine, but you'd have to constantly kind of dig through them. This way they're kind of all spread out. But when I carry them around, you know, when I carry this either and work on it in bed or at the kitchen table, they're not going to get all, all mushed around. So I love, I love this little setup. So then all it, so you can see all I have in here, this is, this is it. This is all I need to work in my simple dory. There's maybe a few pieces of pattern paper, like the, the printables that I would grab and take with me as well. But I've got some stamp sets in here. I've got um, the little enamel dots. I've got the, the uh, note cards from our pocket memory keeping kit. I've got some chipboard in here and stickers. So, and some alpha stickers. And then if you look, I've got, I've got some of my planner stickers and then there's some of my extra pieces of paper. I had punched a few extra arrows. I've got those in there. So it all kind of tucks in there and again, it's not a lot that you have to carry around. Always have lots of tags. I've got my pen, uh, some of my foam adhesive, my hole punch, my knife. I like to use, um, and I can't even think of what that's called, if it's a, some sort of a embossing stylus maybe, but I like to use this if I have any uh, paper that is gonna run through the seam like right here, when I fold it, I may do that a little bit just to kind of make sure it goes down into the seam of that a little bit. So I have that, I've got my washi tape, my date stamp, some of my extra pictures that I've printed out. And honestly, that's really about it. And what I like too is then on the, on the top here, if I need to spread something else out, I can do that. 
if I need to actually take these sections out there, you could take them all out if you want. So really with this and my little printer and my booklet and my printables, that's it. I'm done. That's all I need to create that whole booklet. And it's just, I'm so excited about it because it's just been so wonderful to be able to, to create again in a small format, in a quick format, and, and get those memories down and, and get them written down. And yeah, it's, I'm just really excited about it. And in fact, I, I'm so excited about it that I wanted to create a kit that was based around this simple dory. So that's what we've done. And starting with our, um, with our January theme, which ships out December 1st, we did a pre-order for our first um, Traveler's Notebook memory keeping kit. And it will have, it will have papers, it will have stamps, it, it will have a stamp set, it will have papers, um, it will have some die cuts, it will have some stickers, it's going to have some fun stuff in it and, and some washi tape. It will basically have everything that you need to create one of these, one of these booklets. And that, like I said, that will, the first one ships out December 1st or the first week in December. And that one we did a pre-order on and that is sold out. But, um, December 2nd, the, uh, the subs will open back up again. And then uh, that the next kit shipping January, the first week in January, will will be open, and you'll be able to to subscribe to those. And the other thing that I'm really excited about for the first time, we are going to have a kit that includes a instruction sheet from me. So each kit that you get, I will have an instruction sheet that will have a couple of examples of layouts using that month's kit. So it kind of gives you a jump start um, on how to use the product, some unique ways to, to, um, to use the Simple Dory and the, the stuff that's in the kit. So I'm really excited to be, to be adding that to that kit. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. So that is a look at my booklet for October and my system. And I'm just so, so happy to be sharing this with you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them below in the comments for me and I'll do what I can to try and answer them. And I will see you with another one next month.